Hi everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model the Bench. Welcome back to the channel and we have today another book review for you and it's the latest release from Wing Leader Productions and it's the North American Mustang Mark 1 uh, and Mark 1A and Mark 2 in RAF service. So as I always do with these, starting off here, if you order your book directly from Wing Leader, I'll show you in a minute the, uh, the web address and the, 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 um, the code and everything, you, if you order them direct, this is what you get. So you get a lovely sealed plastic envelope. So if it's raining on delivery day, it doesn't matter because it's sealed. Then it's in a nice rigid cardboard envelope, which is nice and rigid, protects, protects all the corners, stops any dog earring or anything. So that's good. And then you've got the, the bag, which it comes in, nice bubble wrap bag, which is all sealed up and everything. So you get your book come to you in perfect condition. As you can see, all the corners, absolutely spotless. I once bought a book on Amazon and it came in a jiffy bag and all the corners were dented and everything and I was really disappointed. So it's got a little piece of damage down here. That's my fault. I um, knocked it into something. So um, there we go. So this is the the brand new release from Wing Leader Productions in their photo archive series. Let me just move that light to get rid of the glare. Um, and this is number 22 now. The last one was the Typhoon, if you remember. And this is the, uh, the where you get it from here, www.wingleader.co.uk. There's your ISBN number. If you want a freeze frame now, you can read that off. And then over here, they're still 1995. So in the time when a packet of crisps has gone up about 70%, these haven't gone up at all. So fair play to them. They've done a great job in keeping their prices down. And once again, it's another fantastic production with some real wartime colour photographs, colour images, and obviously a lot of, of uh, black and white photographs with sort of arrows and letters telling us exactly what's going on. I've had a quick look through, but I haven't really studied it completely. So on the front here, we can see the North American Mustang. This is going to be a Mark 1 or a Mark 1A. You can see it's got the, uh, the early Mark 1... Um, the early Mark 1 uh, cockpit there with the fold down sides. Um, and then you've got the, the, the machine guns in the nose. And then the biggest giveaway of all is the air intake up on top of the nose. So the P36, P63, I can't remember now. A63, A36, I can't remember now. But the American version was, uh, it's the basically it's the Allison engined variants, as you can see down there. Then they went on to the Mark III, which was obviously very much a P51B. But... Um, it was still called the Mark III for the uh, RAF service. So, looking inside the book here, we've got a few words about about what's uh, what it's all about. Um, dedicated to the memory of Flight Lieutenant Guy Edward Shalliner Pease, uh, the last known surviving pilot to have served operationally with 268 Squadron RAF flying Mustang Mark I and Mark I aircraft during World War II, and a close friend. He made it to 100 years of age and sadly passed December 22, so roughly six months ago. So uh, this is from Colin Ford, the author of the book. And then Mark has put some words in here about Colin and Andy, who he got involved with it as well. And it was originally going to be one book, but they've decided to make it into two because Colin had so much information and photographs to add in. So here we've got a genuine colour World War II photograph, which is very, very nice indeed. You can see there, absolutely beautiful. If I can move that light a bit to try and reduce the glare there, it's impossible with these glossy pages. So um, there we go. So going over the page in the beginning, this is the North American NA73 Mustang Mark I, the first Mustang of the initial production batch, photographed over the USA. So it's in the RAF colours, as you can see, and it's ready to come over here. Um, but in the end, it was retained by North American in the US for development and trials use. Uh, when we say North American, North American were the actual manufacturers, not North America as the country. Um, so here we've got the uh, AG348 showing the uh, North American applied camouflage pattern as well as the original short carburetor intake. Note that the carburetor intake is back from the spinner. Uh, we've got fuel filler attack flaps there. We've got the um, uh, single lens landing lights here and then we've got a camera over here on the wingtip and then we've got some simple machine gun ports there. So you can see that as time went on things changed a lot. First thing to change was the intake. They found they had issues when they were diving and stuff. You get like interference with the uh, airflow because of this area in front of the nose. Let me just shut the window a minute. Right. Um, 
So AG346, this one here, this is photographed in America, and here it's in Speak near Liverpool, I'm assuming it's Speak near Liverpool, after reassembly in November 1941. Um, it's now had the longer carburetor intake fitted, you can see the difference there, it's the same aircraft, UK, England, um, US, um, no other barrels of the nose mounted 0.5 inch Browning heavy machine guns protrude, protrude from fairings in the lower nose cowlings. Me, with all my years of modelling and looking at everything, I never ever noticed those machine guns in the nose of a um, North American Mustang. I never noticed them. So, uh, very unusual. They obviously got deleted when the Merlin engine was fitted, but so, uh, yeah. The hole in the rear lower fuselage arrowed at the rear edge of the fuselage round it was a jacking point. So they put a rod through there and then they can jack on it or put stays under it, whatever. Here we can see a nice beautiful picture of the underneath of the aircraft and it's a fantastic guide for your weathering and everything. I'm not sure about these, I know that the Mustangs had a lot of filler in the wings. I'm not sure about these, I'm saying that these wings do look very smooth. Maybe it's covered in the book somewhere, I haven't spotted it. But uh, maybe they are filled in the wings here. So we can see here we've got a movable, a movable flap there on the leading, um, leading edge of the radiator or cooler unit, whatever it is. Um, and you can see here there's some of the engine exposed, note the uh, silver or aluminium framework and they're not painted green. And this is all about how they got delivered to the UK and this is how they came over. That would make a great little diorama, wouldn't it? That's how they're delivered in the UK, crated up um, in parts and then assembled in kit form in, uh, in Lockheed's hangar at Speak, so near Liverpool. So there we go. Um, so you can see there the fuselage being lowered down on onto the wing section. You can see the fin and the rudder and everything is missing. There are bits and pieces everywhere on that. And you can see here we've got other aircraft here queuing up, probably still in their crates, ready to be assembled. Moving on to the armament, we had the Browning and the three um, and the .3 machine guns in the wings mixed up. Um, and here you can see the armament for the nose guns and everything. And there you can see the bullet tracks for the uh, for the wing guns. And then over here, they're talking here about massive um, panels for accessing the the armament, the to, to load the armament. So you can see it was a very easy job to load all that just sitting on the wing and with his little friend there going over the uh, going through the bullets. Here we've got a nose on view. We can see a few changes. You can see the camera's now been moved away from the wing tip over to the central gun. That, that variable flap's gone and we've got these different type exhausts now. Going over the page, we can see now we've got this very, very worn aircraft here with lots of chipping around the wing route. You can see here the, uh, the really strange looking ejector chutes and gun, gun ports. And now we've got the camera fitted in, in the sides. It seems a lot of these had cameras fitted. Got this, this arrow here is pointing to this hole in the top of the fuselage and that was for a flare chute. Now that would have normally been um, covered over in doped um, or resin um, canvas or whatever or, and coloured red or camouflage colour. But on this one it's been ex left exposed. You can see here they've got the uh, power supply connected up to the aircraft. Lovely view of an instrument panel with all telling you what everything is, what it's all doing. And then we've got the Mustang Mark 1 early users and we've got a lovely picture there, one next to a Lysander. I do love the Lysander, it's such a beautiful aircraft. Um, and this one is one of the initial batch received by 613 Squadron at Tinwood Farm. Twinwood Farm, sorry. And then we've got some pilots posing with their aircraft. And here we've got Winston Churchill and the Australian Minister for External Affairs, Dr. H.V. Evatt. So they're coming and have a look at all their nice new planes they've been spending all their money on. And here we can see another one here flying and there's one coming into land and then we've got these beautiful um, CAD generated images which are brilliant for the modeler because it gives you all the tips about you know what was in there what wasn't in there what was fitted what wasn't fitted and it's got all the colors on here it's also worth noting when we get a bit later on this is how the aircraft were delivered and then the the British changed the color to the um, gray the gray green with the light gray underside very much like the Spitfire I'm building now. So some very, very blotchy paint jobs coming your way. Look for that. Um, here we can see, notice here the lettering. It's like the lettering is just mad. Look, there's just like a W there and then this is huge. It seems like there was no real control at this stage. 
this one here is beautiful for like if you really want to go to town on weathering your model look at the the mottling on the paint look how blotchy it is and look at all the chipping everywhere it's just chipped everywhere the leading edge the wing tip the front of the fin there on the root of the tail plane it's just chipped to pieces so worth looking for here's one here which is crash landed you can see the camera in the side there bent propeller showing it would have had uh, metal propeller blades you can see here the aircraft has been repainted so you'll get a nice blotchy blotchy finish on there uh, you can see here is one with a very blotchy finish looking very very nice indeed and you can see here the side folds down much like a Spitfire that's the window that folds down and then folds back up and you can see the top folds up so you can have the side fold down the top fold up and that's how you get in and out and then later obviously they change to the sliding canopy Here's a nice detailed picture of the uh, the upper end of the cockpit. We can see on here, we've got over here, we've got a vent installed to promote airflow to the area behind the cockpit where the radio and batteries were installed. We've got B, which is an upward um, ID light, so they could have that on steady or have it flashing or whatever for the, the code of the day. Uh, flattened antenna post, you can see it's a tube and then it's been flattened. Uh, and then they had a wire embedded inside there with, with a, if they had a VHF radio. D was an inertia switch to set up the fire extinguisher in a crash landing, so that was pretty cool. Uh, early style oblique, oblique reconnaissance camera panel, so there you go, you can see that one there. Rearward sliding panel on each side, so you've got a sliding window within the dropping window frame. Um, G is the internal plate armour in glass frame, um, NA73 AG serial Mark, Mustang Mark 1 only, so that's a, very much like a Spitfire with that thick internal frame. You've got the glycol windscreen de-icing spray so you can see that there and then finally we've got the identification light switch box to the flash the upward id lamp so where's that oh there we go there's the box that flashes that lamp it says here raf allison engine mustangs were fitted with sutton harnesses after arrival in the uk whilst being test flown in the us before delivery they were temporarily fitted with us star harnesses now i'm glad i've read that because i was wondering about my um my uh what is it the um the royal oh our nas is it the um the hellcat anyway the 124th one if you do it in the british scheme would it have had sutton harnesses and i actually found a picture of a sutton harness hanging out the side so i'm glad i read that they did actually swap them over so that's good news um so here we've got a lovely wartime color image there engine running prop going and another one there in black and white just beautiful got one here very very low indeed and then you've got this crazy lettering here look how bold it is and, and just in your face very very visible here you can see the um the camera has been covered over this is showing you the later style intake they were originally like a sort of oval shape and then they changed to this kind of <clears throat> i don't know shape i don't know what shape you call that it's almost like a kidney bowl isn't it uh so you can see that one there another couple of beautiful images of these um of these aircraft another lovely color image you can see we've got an antenna on the front and an antenna on the wing or is that the yeah camera aiming mark yes i saw that um this was used by the pilot to help position the aircraft so the lens of the fixed oblique reconnaissance camera would be aimed at the correct angle to catch the ground target so they would look out their window and as long as that was sort of on the target that was where they and we'll see a picture of that in a minute um, and that is a little antenna. The thin line arrow is the bead for the ring and bead gun sight provided as a backup to them. Oh, it's a, it's a part of the gun sight. Okay, interesting. And here you can see that really sort of blotchy weather chipped and just yeah, <laughs> paint job, which looks awful. Here you can see a lovely smooth underside, all the weathering, all the streaking on there. And we've got a squadron there stood in front of one of their aircraft. Going over the page, got more images, flying over water, looking very pretty indeed. Still on the Mark 1s. Obviously there's a lot of stuff to read in here, a lot of information. But um, I'm not going to be doing that right way through, otherwise you won't go and buy the book. So we've got lots of chipping on here, you can see. Here you can see one's been hit by a, a 20mm cannon. More pictures here, you can see the, the, the sort of completely missing paint on that wing route. And then over here we've got them with the D-Day stripes. 
There's lots and lots of D-Day Stripe pictures in here, which is just great. D-Day Stripes, yep, I'm there, I love them. Um, you can see them here with the stripes on the lower half only. Here's another one, you see the, the blotchy paint scheme, this is in Poland. And now we're moving on to Mustang Mark I Experiments. So, um, you can see it's got the P in the side, so it's a prototype. And they did lots and lots of little experiments. You can see here they're testing rocket rails, they're testing cannons, um, they're testing um, these uh, stores containers under the wings. So doing all sorts of testing. You can see there's an uh, uh, IFF the aerial there. And then more testing there. So now we're on to the Mustang Mark 1A and the biggest change here, they've changed to the American manufactured um, 20 millimeter cannons in the wings rather than the guns. So that's the, you can see now the guns have gone from under the engine as well. So uh, probably because of the weight of them. Um, what's this showing here? Uh, the small vent seen on some Mustang Mark 1 and Mark 1 A's was to improve coolant airflow through the cockpit and the areas immediately behind the cockpit where the radio equipment and batteries were installed so obviously you want to keep the area cool and, and vented if the, if the batteries are giving off any acid uh, uh, acid um, vapour or anything. You see another beautiful uh, wartime picture there. We've got one there with the American Star and the um, and the uh, Aurea Fin Flash on it. Here we've got the gun ammo, you can see the, the cannon underneath there and then there's one here. And you can see that the, the basically the um, the belts underneath feed the bottom that one and the other upper belts feed the inner one. There's some guys there posing. I believe these are the British made cannons. I think they changed to British made cannons. And the way to tell when you see the American ones, they've got this coil spring and the British ones are smooth. So there we go. You can see these are the British ones. These are the British ones. There was also a picture here somewhere I saw, I don't know if I've gone past it, but it's very interesting to see that some aircraft had a big red mark on the inner end of the um, <clears throat> of the wing because the flap, you can see in a picture back here, you can see it here, the flap actually drops down and people would stand on it and, and damage it. So um, they put a red mark, big red mark there to warn the pilots and the crew not to stand on it. You can see here we've got the cannons. Got a lovely picture of the um, underwing stripes there. You can see how neat and tidy they are. Very, very neat and tidy. Um, and you can see they're only on the underside. So it's to stop the uh, being so glared out when the enemy fly above. They don't spot them so easily. You can see we've still got the early canopy. And that's the intake there. When you take the actual upper cowling off, that's where the air goes in for the carburetor. And then here we've got another camera being fitted. Still on the Mark 1A, and you can see we've got D-Day stripes here, top and bottom, because this is June. It was just after June, they, they removed them from the top surfaces. And here's the A36A Mustang, so this is the one you can get from, I think it's Mini Art, or was it Academy? I can't remember now. 30 second scale, you can get that kit. You can see it's got dive brakes on the wings, which never really took off with the English. They didn't want to use it as a dive bomber. Um, just read some of that in here. And they came over and delivered an olive drab with grey undersides. Now we're on to the Mustang Mark II and you can see here the biggest obvious difference when you look at it is the cowling. We've now got the cowling, the canopy. It's now a sliding bubble type canopy rather than the early type canopy there. You can also notice here we've got the uh, the covers on the wings. We've gone back to machine guns in the wings. We've lost the machine guns in the front. Um, what's this here? E Okay, a vertical F24 reconnaissance camera in the rear fuselage. So there's a, a downward looking camera there. You can see there the bubble canopy. So it's starting to look a bit like a P51B now. And then over the page, that's it finally. And you can see some pictures here of some cameras being worked on. And then down here, you can see some pictures. And there's those marks on the wing we were talking about just now. So the pilot could line those marks up with whatever he wanted to photograph and it would show him what he was looking at and here's some pictures from a forward looking camera and you can see there they're strafing some boats in a canal so there we go so um very nice book indeed not really my subject RAF Mustangs if I'm honest um I tend to I tend to and this is just me 
if, if I have an Amer if I build a, a model of an aircraft that's made in America, it's an American aircraft. I want to build it in American livery. I, I wouldn't dream of building a RAF B17, um, but that's just me. But then I wouldn't dream of building um, a US Air, Air Service uh, Lancaster. Say I would only build an RAF Lancaster. So that's that's just me. That's the way I am. Um, so yeah, very very nice book indeed. Again, it's uh, Wing Leader Photo Archive number twenty two. Any Mustangs in RAF service? Uh, going over the back there again. I'll show you the ISBN number. But if you want to see more about the book and a few pictures, go and have a look at the website www.wingleader.co.uk. You can see the other books on there. They're all nineteen ninety five. And um, go and get yourself one if this is your thing. I look forward to the next one because the the Mustang 3 is more like the P51B with the good old Merlin engine. Um, so there we are. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all soon and um, hope you've enjoyed that. Bye for now.